Hello, and thank you for your interest in Komatsu products. Today, we'll be discussing the controls and operation of Komatsu's HD465 and HD605-8 truck. So with that, let's get started. We've been discussing the location of the truck controls. Now we will learn how they actually function. Some of these controls and operations are directly affected by adjustments that are completed during the commissioning process. Ensuring correct adjustments and understanding each function will provide the operator a safe and satisfying experience. Let's get started. Let's first start by looking at the three foot pedals. To the far right is the standard accelerator pedal. Its movement should be free of any obstructions. Immediately to the left is the right brake pedal. This is the operator's normal service brake pedal. When the pedal is depressed, both the front and rear brakes are applied proportionally based on the amount that the pedal is depressed. Remember, the front brake application is dependent on the cutoff switch position. To the far left is a red brake pedal. This pedal is called the secondary brake pedal. Depressing this pedal will apply both the front and rear brakes, regardless of where the front cutoff selection switch is set to. This brake pedal is to be used only in the case where there is a brake system issue or failure and the truck cannot be stopped by the normal service brake system. We have already discussed the four positions of the hoist EPC or electronic proportional control lever. We will now review how each of them operate. When the dump lever is pushed all the way down, this applies hydraulic pressure for the bed to be powered down. When the dump lever is released, it returns to the float position. With the engine running, the normal spring-loaded operating position is the float position. When the lever is pulled all the way up from the float position, it will pass by the hold position and go into the raise position. The handle will stay in the raise position by the detent. At this time, the bed will be going up. As the body raises, the float icon on the dash will illuminate. If the bed sensors are set correctly at a specific angle, the handle will release and return to the hold position. You have the ability to further extend the cylinders, but you must do so by manually lifting the lever. Make sure to install the body pins now, if needed, to secure the bed. Beside the handle, the lock knob has a pin that keeps the lever in the hold position. It must be turned a quarter of a turn for the pin to engage the lever. This is only for locking the handle in the hold position. When the bed is to be lowered, push the handle down to the float position. With the correct settings, the body should lower to the frame smoothly. The float light should go off and the truck will shift correctly. There are four more controls we need to discuss. Two are located on the right side of the steering column. These are the manual retarder and ARSC or automatic retarder speed control. Both control handles operate the same system in the rear axle but do so differently. Using the manual retarder control lever, the operator physically pulls the handle down when descending a hill to slow or stop the truck. The further the handle is pulled down, the more aggressive the retarder application is applied. Any time the retarder lever is applied, the retarder pilot light illuminates. You never want to use the manual retarder lever as a parking brake. Remember to always apply the parking brake when exiting the truck. The small lever below the manual retarder control lever is the ARSC control. ARSC stands for Automatic Retarder Speed Control. This is a feature that when enabled and set will automatically apply the retarder to keep the truck at or below the set speed. When the system is enabled, the travel speed indicator will show two dashes. When driving the truck at the desired downhill speed, press the end of the lever to populate the speed indicator. The system will memorize the setting. If the set speed on the indicator needs to be adjusted, raise the handle to increase or push down to decrease. To cancel the speed altogether, pull the lever to you for at least two seconds. When descending the hill, there are two parameters that must be met for the system to work correctly. The operator must be off the throttle and the truck speed needs to be at or below the set retarder speed. When this happens, the ARSC ready light will illuminate. If the weight of the load increases the truck speed over the set parameters, the ARSC will proportionally apply the retarder so the truck does not exceed the set speed. The gear shift lever allows the operator to select any speed range for the transmission. There are seven forward, 
one reverse, and the neutral gear selections. Select the gear shift range with the gear shift lever according to the travel conditions. The D or drive position is used for normal travel. When D is selected, the transmission will start off in second gear, unless the operator has selected to start in first gear by way of the monitor panel. The transmission will shift up to seventh gear automatically based on the travel speed. The transmission will be fixed in first gear moving forward with no reverse if the body is raised. If any forward position is selected other than the D position, the truck will start off in first gear and shift automatically up to the highest speed that is selected. Use these positions when traveling on soft ground, when it is difficult to travel at high speed, when starting off on a slope with the bed loaded, or when traveling downhill. The reverse position only operates in first speed. The parking brake switch is right beside the gear shift lever. It is used to apply and release the parking brake. By pushing the top of the switch, the parking brake is applied. When the parking brake switch is set to the park position, the parking brake pilot lamp lights up on the monitor panel. If the gear shift lever is put into any position other than neutral, the centralized warning lamp will light up and the alarm buzzer will sound intermittently. When the bottom of the switch is pushed, the parking brake is released. This is the normal travel position. For safety reasons, remember that if the engine stops running while the parking brake switch is in the normal travel position, the parking brake will be applied automatically. When starting the engine again, set the parking brake switch to the park position, and then set it back to the normal travel position to release the parking brake. This concludes the controls and operation for Komatsu's HD465 and 605-8 truck. If you have any questions or need any additional information, please refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual located behind the seat. Thank you for your interest in Komatsu products.